Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to flip over and I'm going to read this first verse and you can be seated. 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, 39th verse. Then hear thou in heaven, thou dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. And listen to this very closely. For thou, even thou only, we're talking about God, even thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. You may be seen. You know, we've talked about in the past, Brother Charles, you know, we talked about, I, I've often, you know, I often wonder uh, if the devil could read your mind. Well, the heart really is your mind. Amen. And according to the word of God, Brother Jimmy, it says that God and him only, and him only, Amen. knows the hearts of the children of men. Mm -hmm. So you know what that tells me? The devil can't read my mind, Brother Tim. That's right. <laughs> But you know what the devil can do? The devil can predict your actions from your past experiences. My, my. So don't let don't let the devil fool you and think that he can read your mind. But he can predict your actions. And that's not really the heart of my message tonight. I want to flip on over to 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. I'm going to read that ninth verse. This is David talking to Solomon. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart. You notice it mentions the heart again. And with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts if thou seek him if thou seek him he will be found of thee but if thou forsake him he will cast thee off forever no, no, no. if I'm seeking God God will be in my midst but if I stop seeking God, God won't be there. Now, some people, that's what the scripture just said. That's what the scripture just said. Now, some people say, now, Brother Richie, this is the Old Testament. We're under grace now. You know what grace does? It turns that forever into you can come back. Praise God. Thank God. A repentant heart can come back. Mm -hmm. That's what grace does. Amen. That's what grace does for this verse. I, I want us to understand that. See, this does away with so many of them that want to preach. We, we talked about it in the adult class and everything. This, this once saved, always saved. And, and uh, you know, talk about, well, I can get saved. I can still do what I want to do. I can keep my same lifestyle, this and that. That's, that's putting Jesus on the cross in vain. That's mean, that, that means you, you're, trying to, you're trying to shame God. And the scripture just told us, as long as you seek God, as long as you're seeking the path of God, God will always be there. Thank you, Jesus. But if you turn your back on God, God ain't necessarily going to be there when you want him to be. You know, we like to say we obligate God. I, I don't like saying that because that means I have a control of God and God can do what He wants to do. I, I can't put God in a box. God can do what He wants. He can save who He wants to. He can do what He wants to. As all we know is we have the Word of God. And that's what we have to go by. 
And as long as we stick with the word, we're in good shape. But I, my one of my things that I want to I want to try. Let me get this next verse. Flip over to the Psalms, one thirty nine, and I'm going to read one through twelve. This is David talking again, and he's 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 telling the Lord that you know God didn't just take David out of a problem or things that he had going on. He didn't just remove those things. He didn't always just remove them. But he stayed with him. He stayed with him through them because he always seeked God. Amen. He always seeked God. And I'll tell you what, David does some bad things. Look, David done stuff we'd have kicked him out of church a long time ago for. Him. Come on now. Come on now. Murder. Mm -hmm. Adultery. All these different things. You wouldn't even talk to a brother after doing that half the time. But David still had favor of God. Yes, because is. he always was seeking God. He paid prices. He Amen. did pay a price. He paid a price. It, anytime we indulge in sin, there will be a price. And it's usually a price you bring on yourself. It's not necessarily God making you pay for nothing. It's you're paying for it yourself because you got yourself in it. That's why God warns us against a lot of things because He knows if you get in it, you're going to get hurt in it. We think He's just trying to keep us from doing things. We're just trying to keep us bound up. That's not it. The reason God tells you you don't need to do that is because you're going to get hurt doing it. You're going to cause problems doing it. But that's not really, that's still not. Let me read, let me read this. Oh Lord, thou hast uh, searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest me, uh, my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Yeah, God knows there. Yes, it does. Look, when we talk about the devil can predict your actions, it's because he watches your ways. Amen. He watches how you handle things. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from the, thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from the presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. That means no matter where David goes, no matter where, what part he goes to, or he even tries to hide, as long as he's seeking God, God will be there. Amen. God's there. He will be with you because he's there, because he's still seeking you. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both a light to thee. You can't hide from God in the dark. <laughs> Amen. Whether you're in the dark or you're in the light, God still knows where you're at. Yes, he does. Right. Whether you're at the deepest part of the sea, floating in the belly of a fish, or whether you're running to the other side, away from Nineveh, God knows where you're at. Yes, he does. God knows. And, and one of the things that we have to understand, and, and I'm, I'm trying to get to my point, God knows our heart. Yes, He does. And, you know, a lot of times we think we know our heart. We put on, sometimes we'll put on these uh, different fronts and different things, act like we got it under control, act like we know exactly what we're thinking. But God knows your true heart. No matter what you say to somebody else and tell them what you think, 
no matter what you tell them how you think or how you do or what you say, God knows what you meant. Yeah, to do it. God knows what you're thinking. You know, it's kind of a scary thought to think about it that, you know, we, we'll we have little snide remarks sometimes. We'll let them come out and not really know it, you know, to ourselves and this and that. You'll think, well, nobody heard that. God did. That's why I have been, I have, I have taught myself how to say, forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. We have to get forgiveness for those things too. We're living in grace. We can get forgiveness for them. Mm -hmm. Let me get to this. Uh, I, I want to. The, the reason I read this about David is because David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he was. You know, I mean, God had a purpose for him. And even though he let him down some, even, well, I say some, he let him down a lot. Because he does some bad stuff. In this day and time, it was tragic stuff. Then, maybe not as bad, but it was bad. But he always ended up still seeking God and won't forgive his fault. Yes, sir. Because he knew God knew his heart. Thank God. He knew his heart. Let's flip to uh, Jeremiah. I got a couple of quick scriptures in Jeremiah. The 12th chapter. I'm going to read that third verse. But thou, Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. But I, I, I want to dwell on the first part of that scripture. Where it says, But thou, o Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee. He's tried my heart. What does he mean by tried my heart? What does he mean by that? Well, let's flip on over to uh, Jeremiah the 17th chapter. The 10th verse. Actually, I didn't give you the 9th verse, but I'm going to read the 9th verse too with it. Because <laughs> there's something that I do want us to remember, and this is the scripture talking, this ain't me. The 9th verse says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Read 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Try the reins. What does that mean? You see, all this, uh, for a long time, Brother Huddy, for a long time, I, I've always, we think we have trials. You know, we think God allows things to happen to try us, to see how we'll handle it, to see what we'll do. But you see, I, I realized I, I had an epiphany. Big word, epiphany. In other words, I had a thought. It's a fancy word for thought. I thought to myself, I was being redundant. Because you see, God is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. He's all-knowing. He already knows how I'm going to handle it. He already knows what I'm going to do after it. He already knows what I'm going to do through it. So why would I think God was putting me on trial? God's not putting me on a trial. Mm -mm. No. God allows these things to happen so I will try myself. Amen. So I will actually see the things in my heart that if I hadn't went through that, I would not realize I had that in my heart. When we're tried like that, when we have things going on and everything, we have to realize that God wants us, because He already knows, but He wants us to be able to see if you've got some deceit in your heart, if you've got some strife in your heart. Because you see, it's easy to put on the front 
Be kind and good to everybody, but somebody gets smart with you one day. And something comes out, and you just get smart right back with them, just like that. See, if that hadn't happened, you wouldn't have realized how you had a smart mouth in your heart that you didn't really know was there. God wants us to know our heart. Yes, sir. And that's what I titled the message tonight. Know the heart. You have to know what you have in your heart. You have to know. You need to be able to have a good idea of how you're going to handle the situation and go into it with that mindset. You see, we've had, we've had, me and my wife, we've had a lot of bad stuff happen the last couple of years and had a lot of things go on that was, you know, most people would consider bad. I did. The loss of loved ones and things like that. You know, you have to wonder, you know, you know, why is this happening? And to tell you the truth, I still can't give you a full answer on that. But I know way more about my heart right now than I did before any of that happened. Bless him, Lord. I realize way more about myself and what's more important in my heart than I would have otherwise. I found out how my uh, emotions can be affected so greatly by a little. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was in my heart. I didn't. I never had a kid. I didn't know. Now I know. I know in my heart. I know how that affects me. We, we, uh, some of y'all may know. Some of y'all may know. Some of you don't. We've been... We've been in the works on, uh, on uh, uh, getting a little baby and adopting it, and uh, it was born this morning. And you know, it, it's been a long, it's kind of a long process, and this and that. But you know, I we we're just waiting on it now, you know, and it. When you see, I, all I've seen is a picture so far. But when I seen that picture, I already have a pretty good idea right now, Sister Carolyn, about how that baby is going to affect my heart. Because you know why? I know more about my heart now than I did before. Amen. If you've been in a bad situation where somebody was coming up against you, this and that, and you're holding that little bit of a grudge about them and you really don't know that. And every time their name's mentioned, you soul up or you give a, a weird look or something like that. God is helping you realize what you have in your heart. Amen. And that is not pure. And God is seeking us to have a pure heart. Mm -hmm. He is. You see, if those things don't happen, you don't want to die with those things hidden in your heart. And if things don't happen around us, if things don't, situations don't go this way or that way, we would never know it was there. God already knows. But God knows more than we do. I, I want to read... Uh, I just I finished just finished ten. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel, the eleventh chapter. I'm gonna read that fifth verse. I'm gonna add it in with it, and then I'm gonna drop down to uh, nineteen. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak. Thus saith the Lord. Thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Huh. Drop on down to 19. He's talking about, he's referring back to uh, Israel here, but I want, us to, I want us to apply this to us. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. 
that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Y'all, we try to think that we're fooling God. We think we're hiding things from God. We think we're hiding thoughts and things. And if we're not praying to God, then God don't hear it. God knows every thought. Yes, He does. And you know, even even as a child of God, you're going to have thoughts, but you got to get forgiveness for them. We all will stand before a judgment seat. And I talked about this the other day. And I'm not talking about the white from the white from judgment. That's not what I'm talking about. All of us will stand before God and answer to Him as a child of God what we did with the life of a child of God. Both good and bad. And you see, you may get up there and just want to mention the good. But you see, he already knows the bad too. Yes, he does. He knows it all. He knows all of it. And, and, and so, you should be able to stand before God with a pure heart. You say, well, how do you get a pure heart? you got to have your heart full of love of God. Mm -hmm. No matter who you're dealing with, no matter what situation you're in, no matter who you think you're having to put up with, or what you're having to put up with, you still got to have the love of God. You know, I, I, all this time, you know, I, I've been thinking about how God putting people on trial, putting trials and tribulations in their way just to see how they react to them. And that was just so crazy for me to think that because God already knew what they were going to do. God puts us on trial and gives us tribulations so we can see what's in our heart. So we can actually see what kind of person we really are and not what we think we are. I've often said it a lot of times, you don't really know anybody for sure until you have to work with them. Because <laughs> I've worked with some folks that I was friends with them, but I, I, I didn't want to have to work with them. You know, you, you see there, Brother Josh, he knows, he knows what I'm talking about. Hey, you know, there's people that, you know, you, you overlook things just being friends with them. When you got to work with them, you can't quite overlook it sometimes. You know, you got, and, and look, it could be something as simple as somebody that's just negative all the time. Look, I, I heard a preacher talk about this earlier today about what he referred to was you say, what you say can be a blessing or a curse. What, how you perceive something or what you say to it the situation, a person, or anything, you either bless the person or you curse them. And, and I, I, I never really thought about it in this manner because he, he went back, he gave some scriptures about, you know, where, where God, well, one of, the, one of the most familiar scriptures to most anybody would be when Jesus walked up and cursed the fig tree. By speaking negatively to that fig tree, when they walked back by it, Brother Timmy, it was dried up to the roots. He cursed it because he talked negativity to it. Because it didn't have any fruit. You know, nobody will ever eat from you again. All this. Well, we do that with a situation a lot of times. We'll think negative about the situation. We'll go, yeah, I don't know what the use is. What is the use? I don't really know. You're cursing the situation. I'm always broke. I'm going to be broke. I'm always broke. You sure are because you're cursing it right now. I ain't never got the money to do anything. And you won't because you're cursing. You see, spoken word 
And I don't know why I'm getting off on this, but it's coming to you. The spoken word is so important because what we say sometimes is coming straight from the heart. And if you have always have that negativity, and you always have that little smirk, and you always have a little comment, and it's always something negative about somebody, that's what's in your heart. And that's not a pure heart. That's not a heart full of the love of God. When we speak kindness of somebody, when we speak caringness, forgiveness, compassion, we bless them. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about, Brother Jody, somebody comes up and tells you, man, what a good job you did playing the drums on that song. It makes you feel good, don't it? You know what that was? That was a blessing. But if I walk up here and said, yeah, that's pretty good, Seth. You know, your kick was off just a little bit, but I know you'll do better next time. I just cursed him. I didn't make him feel I walked over and what I said either blessed or cursed. We can be the same way if we're not careful. Right. We have to be aware of what we're saying because it's coming from the heart. And a lot of times, if it's not coming from the heart, you just don't need to be saying it no way, probably. I'm telling you, better off not saying anything. I go to uh, Luke, the 16th chapter. I'm going to read that 15th verse. And he said unto them, and this is Jesus talking, and remember what we say. If Jesus says anything, what is it? The Word of God. Amen. Why? Because Jesus Amen. is God. And he said unto them, you are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Hmm. You are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. Yeah, you can yeah. try to be this big religious figure all you want to. You can put on a front to everybody you know and be a person that everybody just wants to look up to and everything. You can be this person that's at the top of the podium every time and people look at you and you've got this front on and you're full of, of self-righteousness. But God knows your heart. Amen. God knows your true heart. And we need to get to a point where we are never trying to fool ourselves. Much less God. I mean, come on. You know, we're, Brother Charles is talking about the creator of all things. Yeah, we're smarter than him, all right. Yeah. Not so. See, we're fooling ourselves when we think we're, <laughs> we're tricking God. Or we're just not telling God about that. Or we'll just keep that to ourselves. But you see, God already knows it. God already knows it. I got one more scripture. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. The twelfth verse. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And here, this is very familiar to most people. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the divided asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints of marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What did that scripture just say? The word. The word of God. What does that tell me? 
I need to get to a point to where my thoughts, whether they be simultaneous thoughts that just pops in my head, or whether they be thoughts that I have to think about a little while. You know how most of the time if you're going to give an answer to something you really don't know what to say, Brother Grant, you know, you, you need to think about it, don't you? You know, you, need to take, you don't need to just say something, you know. You need to know what you're talking about, you know. That means that my quick thoughts or my reactions should all line up with this Word of God. And if they start lining up, and, and look, we, we can shoot for 100%, but we're, we're flesh. It ain't going to happen. Amen. Jesus is the only one that's ever been in the flesh that lined up all the Word. Amen. But we need to be shooting for at least 80 or 90%. <laughs> Jesus came here to set an example for us. And if we want to try to live up to his example, we got to at least try. And the only way you can try to line those things up with the Word of God is by studying the Word of God, read the Word of God, hearing it preached, hearing it teached. Amen. If you don't understand what it means, ask somebody to discern it for you. Somebody that knows what they're, like me and Brother Brad was just talking about, don't let it be somebody that's just going to tell you something. Let it be somebody you know knows the Word of God. Brother Charles. Or Brother Jody. Somebody that knows the Word of God. Somebody that has studied the Word of God. Has seen things happen and can discern that for you if you don't understand it. That's what the adult class is for. Those things that you don't understand. Those scriptures you don't understand and those things. But if we want to have a pure heart, we are going to have to start trying to line our heart our mind, our thoughts up with the Word of God. But church, look, if you don't get anything else tonight, anything else other than what I'm about to tell you, your mind and how you handle it and how you deal with it is going to be the biggest obstacle you ever deal with walking this face of the earth. You think about it. Your mind decides on how hard a situation is. It helps you decide on how easy a situation is. It helps you decide on if you're going to be kind to somebody. It helps you decide if you're going to be mean to somebody. God says He tries the reins. That means God will allow things to happen around us or He may put things have things come up. And it's not just to see how you'll react. It's so you can see how you will react. Amen. And how you can see what your heart is really like. You know, we'll say, well, if that was me, I don't, you don't really know unless you do it. Even God come down to walk a mile in our shoes. Amen. Yes, it is. <laughs> you don't believe me? <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you because you ain't reading the Word of God. But I'm going to tell you this. All you have to do is a quick comparison between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And you'll see. You see... Jesus walked with a pure heart. And so many times in the scripture, Brother Timmy, he had that pure heart. He had to moan and groan in the spirit of just what was going on around him and how bad it was. The disbelief, the lack of faith. He would, he, those things that, that you just don't, you know, it just, uh, uh, one of the things Brother, Brother Jeffries preached, not, just a few services ago, he preached about Lazarus coming forth out of the tomb. If you go back and read those scriptures, it says Jesus groaned in the spirit. Yes, it is. And he wasn't groaning to, to conjure up the spirit. He wasn't groaning to conjure up anything. He prayed to God and he prayed aloud so everybody else would hear it. You know why? Because he saw such a lack of faith in the people that were standing around him. 
You know, Father, he's been dead four days. He's going to stay. You got to understand, you know, Jesus can say, look, you're forgetting. This is in plain English. Don't forget, I'm God. You know, we, 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 we can look back at that. Uh, <laughs> they come told Jesus Lazarus was sick, deathly sick. And he waited two days before he headed out to go. Why? Because he told them. He wanted God to have the glory. Guess what? Because he knew, already knew what was going to happen. Just like he already knew, he already knows exactly what you're going to do tomorrow, how you're going to do it, how you're going to react to it. And some people will say, well, if, if God already knows, then what's the use? What's the use? Why don't I just go? I, I've heard this. I've heard people testify this before. If God already knows whether I'm going to do it or not, so I just will do it. I've heard that. What's that say about the Word of God? You see, you can't say that because you're dismissing the Word of God. Because if you're going to do something that's against the Word of God, it's not of God. Amen. If it don't line up with the Word of God, it's not of God. People can get up, they can preach it, they can tell you how, they can tell you how, well, we're going to have to accept this, and we need to accept that, and you're a hypocrite, and a bigot, and a, all these different things, and you can try to be politically correct all you want to, but when it gets right down to it, you're the one that's going to stand before God. That's right. And you're the one that has to stick with the Word of God and answer for that. And we'll answer for the good and the bad. And, look, I want everybody, I speak a blessing on everybody right now, I want everybody to receive the full reward that God can give them. Amen. Yes, sir. Everybody receive it. I speak Amen. it right now. I want to speak a blessing on everybody that they receive the full reward of God. That they can stand before God with a pure heart knowing that they tried their best to stick with the Word of God and to do the best they could in controlling themselves and everything. And even when it come to mind, you'd have to ask God for your forgiveness. You didn't want that on your mind. I want that out of my heart. I don't even want those thoughts in my mind. Put them aside. Don't let them stay there. Get rid of them. Say, I rebuke you. Get away from me. You know, I, I, I've thought about uh, going back to what I was talking about, you know, wondering, you know, we think we have these trials and we have these truths, but I don't think it. I know we have them. I just want us to understand that God isn't putting us on trial. God isn't trying us. We're trying ourselves. Amen. God wants us to see what's really there. Yes, sir. And it may take a certain situation for you to see it or realize it. But when you see it and when you realize it, all you got to do is deal with it. And get that out of there. That's right. You know what? There's nothing greater than being blessed of God. That's right. <laughs> there is. Amen. That's a fact. And, and and church, I know things, you know, stuff's went wrong, this and that in the last year or two. But you know what? I do not deny. And I say it right now, I am blessed of God. Yes, sir. Some people might say, well, how can you say that? I just said it. I can say it with my mouth to bless someone else. Thank God. What I say will either be a blessing to somebody else or it will be a curse. So from now on, when you start catching a hold of something that something starts catching a hold of you and starts kind of tugging at your emotions, start thinking about <laughs> if 
If I say this, will this be a blessing or will it be a curse? And you will answer your own question about whether or not you need to say it or not. I'd much rather hear a blessing at you, Sister Sandy. Blessed, yes. I don't ever want to hear a curse. And you know what? We don't even, not even just dealing with other people. We want to be blessing ourselves. You can bless yourself. It's like I was talking about. There's power in the spoken word. If you start talking about, I know tomorrow's just going to be awful. I know tomorrow just ain't going to work out. I know tomorrow's going to be a real. I just know that tomorrow's going to be. You're just setting yourself up for that very thing. That's right. Because you're cursing it. But if you speak and say, you know what? I may have some hard work tomorrow. But I'm going to walk into it and do the best I can in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I, tomorrow may be rough on the body. But I'm going in and I'm going to feel good. Amen. I'm going to go in and I'm going to enjoy myself. Whether I have to just entertain my own self. Tomorrow's going to be a good day. No matter what anybody else says. That's right. And you're at least speaking a blessing on the day. <coughs> Church, I really want us to understand. No matter how you act. And I say act. No matter how you say you feel. No matter how you tell or act around other people. No matter how you respond to different things, whether seen or unseen. God knows it already. Yes, he does. God knows your heart. Yes, he does. He knows both sides of it. And we need to start walking in the day where if something a little bit wrong starts going on and uh, some little bad something pops in your head about it, you need to say, you know what? I didn't really, re I didn't really know that was there. I got to take care of that. Mm -hmm. That's when we got to start walking in a blessed thing. Let's start saying blessings instead of saying curses. If anything you're going to say to somebody, you know, because you'll know. If it's going to be a curse, you know what the best thing to do? Just don't say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. But most of all, God knows what you think. That's right. You sure ain't does. tricking God. You ain't hiding nothing from God. He sees everything we do. He sees everything we said. He knows everything we think. He knows everything you watch on TV. He knows every song you listen to. <laughs> he knows who you hang around with. Yes, he does. He knows what, how you act with these people. He knows how you act with those people. He knows how you act in his sanctuary. He knows how you act outside his sanctuary. That's right. God knows. Sure does. And if you ain't at peace with what you do, whether in the church or out of the church, you're making God an adversary. And don't do that. God should never be an adversary. He should always be a blessing. And if we stick with God's word, we're trying to line as best we can to live God's word. He will never be an adversary. He'll always be a blessing. Thank God. Praise the Lord, church.